welcome back to my channel. I am Diva Messi. in case you don't already know. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a DIY braided closure wig, all right? So this is a closure wig. It's a five by five closure braided wig. And I'm super excited for this tutorial. So this is like an updated one from my previous closure wig. And in today's video, we're also gonna be you know ventilating the closure i'm going to show you how to simply make your own closure at home how to make it to whatever size and whatever like whatever size you want be it a five by five a four by four a five by six whatever you want i'm going to show you how to do that in this video i'm going to show you how i constructed this wig to come out looking this beautiful so this is what it's looking like i'm super impressed with how it came out if this sounds like something you're interested in then make sure to keep on watching love you Mwah. Please, we're going to be starting with our wig cap prep. Prepping your wig is very important for your braided wig, so it sits perfectly on your head. So for your braided wig, I always advise you use a down cap, very important. You either go ahead to use the mesh down cap like I'm showing you, or you use a spandex down cap. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead to show you the canvas head, the back and the front. I showed this because someone asked in the previous video, how do you kind of differentiate them? It's very differentiative, all right? So I'm just going to go ahead to wear the wig cap on the canvas head, and then I'm going to take it back from the bottom of the canvas head upwards. I'm going to take the wig cap to eight inches, like you can see. Then I'm just going to use these very little pins to pin them down or pin the wig cap down so you can see it so now i'm just gonna go ahead to prep my wig this is very explanatory or if it's not explanatory i do have a video a very in-depth video where i show how i prep my wig cap it's very important you should know how to prep it with every measurement and everything so now i'm just taking in the excess wig cap all right because i've gone ahead to kind of measure it to my head shape and i'm just seeing the excess one thing i want to mention is that once you're doing this make sure to kind of still leave a little bit of room so that the hair is not like really tight also the wig cap is not so tight make sure to leave a bit of room all right so i'm just going to go ahead with my thread and needle and just kind of sew that down and that's basically it <laughs> So once I'm done sewing down the wig cap, the next thing I'm going to do is kind of mark where I'm going to place my braids, right? I'm just going to go ahead to mark one inch, every one inch on my tape. That's just what I'm doing. So now we're going to get into a very important aspect of this video, the making of the closure. Guys, I, this process might be a bit tricky, but just stay with me. So I'm showing you two different nets. I'm showing you the Swiss lace and the HD lace. I'm going to go ahead to use the HD lace in this video. You're going to need your measuring tape, a chalk, preferably a chalk, not a pencil. And then you're going to need ruler optional. So I'm just going to show you right now that you're not meant to place your net like this if you're prepping it. Make sure it's in a straight line like I'm showing you. Make sure to place it, I think, horizontally and not... Or no, make sure to place it vertically and not horizontally. So we're doing a 5x5 five five closure today. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark 7 inches because I'm going to leave 1 inch for the folding. And I'm also going to leave 1 extra inch for the net that is going to be in front. If you get what I mean. Then I'm going to go ahead to mark for the vertical, I think. I don't know, for the straight line too. I'm going to go ahead to mark for the other side. And then I'm just going to mark, you know, it's we're doing 5. Alright, we're going to be doing 5x5. Five five. So I'm just going to mark five and then mark an extra um, inch for if you're starting i advise you to leave like two inch because you're going to fold one inch one inch at the side mostly if you're not an expert at folding already because even me i did make a mistake i left one and a quarter inch but i could have left more actually because when i was folding it kind of gave me issues so i'm just going to go ahead to kind of draw that mark that shape out that we've measured out i hope the video is very explanatory but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead to kind of draw that out. And then I'm just going to go ahead to make sure to check your measurement back. 
check that everything is intact what you're doing is well like you're making sure you're cutting exactly and then i'm just going to cut with my scissors and then you should have a box like this kind of a rectangle or a square depending on how you cut it right so i'm just going to go ahead to take one inch off the back or the edges of the back of the lace net all right this is what kind of forms that curve when you're when you're folding your lace closure so i'm just going to go ahead to use this very small small pins i'm going to go ahead to use them to kind of like fold and then pin all right so i'm folding and pinning just to kind of get that very neat um kind of neat ends basically so you want to go ahead to fold and make sure you whenever you're done folding you want to make sure you measure again to make sure that the inches that you want that's what you fold it to because if you fold it too small you can have excess measurements and if you fold it too small you can have um, if you fold it too big you might then have like it won't be so accurate i don't know if you get what i mean but i've just gone ahead to fold it both sides and folded the back also and you're gonna see what it looks like afterwards so this is what it should look like once you're done folding i hope you're seeing what i did so i'm just going to go ahead with my invisible thread and then i'm just going to go ahead to sew this for sewing this you actually need a very small needle but i didn't have so i just used my curved needle but i was very gentle while i was doing this i was really gentle while i was sewing this i just made sure to take my time drag it out very slowly and yeah that's basically it So yeah this is how i make my closure so this is what i mean by taking your tape and checking that is so you see because i didn't leave like i didn't leave seven inch on the other side my net is a bit smaller why after folding it's not giving me exactly five inch all right so but that's fine so why i have six inch on the longer side is because i'm leaving one inch room when i'm done you know when i'm ventilating you need an excess lace in front so that's why so now I'm just going to go ahead to kind of form how I'm going to ventilate. I don't really need these boxes to be honest. I just kind of wanted to make sure it's very explanatory for someone because I really want this to be as detailed as possible. But honestly, if you do this once or twice, once you've finished making these boxes, like once you've actually done a lace closure once or twice, you figure out you only need your first box actually. You only need the first box and once you get the first boss you're actually good to go you do not need to draw lines like this but this is just so it helps you once you're starting out and like i said i don't advise you using a pencil i advise you using a chalk going with a chalk is easily removable right for me i'm doing it for myself nobody's gonna hold me if i have lace pencil or if i have pencil eyeliner pencil on my net no one is gonna hold me to it and i'm dark skinned so once i put my foundation on it it's just gonna get lost you're not gonna see the lines that i'm putting in so now we're gonna go into placing our lace closure this is very easy i'm just gonna go ahead to place the middle of the net on the middle of my canvas head it's going to show the line i'm just going to place it and then i'm going to try and make sure i lay the closure lace i'm going to make sure i lay it flat and then go ahead to sew it down So now we're going to go into another important aspect of this video which is the ventilating of the lace closure so i've gone ahead to do the back of the lace closure as you can see i took some of the um 
ventilating i ventilated it backwards so you can kind of cover the nets all right i hope you get what i mean so i'm just showing you what i've gone ahead to do so now i'm just going to go ahead to ventilate the side part and show you as i do that so what i'm doing now is i'm just making sure i have all the hair away from the you know away from where i'm going to walk and i'm just pinning them down that's a very good way to take it out of your way because you don't want that bothering you while you're ventilating all right so once you're done with a section pin it back and then continue in your other section so now i'm just going to go ahead to ventilate i'm just going to put the ventilating pin i'm using i'm going to put a picture of that at the side and this is what it looks like it has three parts it has three pins that comes with it the big the small and the medium all right lots of people have you guys have seen that a lot of times on this channel so i'm just going to go ahead and start ventilating ventilating is very easy it's a very easy process you just have to kind of follow the hand movement that's what's really important the hand movement is what's really important even when you're ventilating with a needle or a lash hook like i'm using so i'm just going to go ahead to explain my own technique why you kind of watch the videos is very explanatory so for technique wise i give three spacing three line spacing for the center part it's kind of a bit too much sometimes i give two but if i really want the spacing and the middle to be very obvious i give a three spacing so i give three spacing in the middle two spacing when i'm starting a new box all right then i give one spacing in between a box i really hope that's explanatory so three spacing in the middle two when i'm starting a new box and one in the middle i'm actually going to have a very detailed ventilating video coming up soon all right i really hope you like this angle let me know what you think about showing it through this angle or if you want me to show it in another angle but i'm gonna have a very in-depth video coming up very soon so watch out for that So I've just gone ahead to ventilate the rest of the wig off camera and then the only part is remaining is the front left side. I'm just showing you guys every part on how I ventilated it and what I did. So I'm just going to go ahead to start ventilating the front of the wig. For ventilating the front of the wig, I'm actually very careful. I actually go in with just like, I go in with two strands of hair when I'm ventilating. No more than two because you want that not to be as thin as possible because the bigger the the bigger the strands of hair the bigger the knots so the smaller the strand of hair the smaller the knots you can see how small that knot is looking like i just went ahead to show you guys so i'm just going to go ahead and ventilate it into a box and then i'm just going to go ahead and braid it basically we're gonna get into the braiding of the wig i'm gonna be using this crochet hook all right it's kind of a bit big and it's if you're not careful you can rip your wig cap so i advise you to take it easy you don't have to be very pushy with it just take your time wiggle it through the wig cap and then you use it to pull out your attachment and that's it's very easy if you take it very gently i some people complain about it's ripping the rip them um, the wig cap but if you actually go in very gently and just kind of wiggle it through it's going to come out very smoothly so i'm just going to go ahead to put a bigger piece of attachment depending on the size you're actually going for if you're going for a smaller um you know size of braid it doesn't really matter it depends on the size of braid so the size of braid would determine the type of attachment the size of attachments you put in between the braid or the type of and um, the size of attachments you kind of draw in so your size of attachment determines what you're going to do 
all right so i'm just gonna go ahead to braid it so basically this is the pink part of the hair because like i said before i went ahead to do a pink peekaboo and then i'm just gonna go ahead to put the black on top so i went ahead to braid the black and one thing you want to take note is how i arranged this the back of the wig doesn't have to be um what's it called the back of the wig doesn't have to be so full honestly it's the front that really should be full because if the back is full it's going to be pulling you all right but if it's in the front it's not going to be so heavy if you have most of the braids in the front so just make sure you know how to distribute it because it's not just about braiding it if you don't distribute it well your head is going to be heavy the wig is going to be heavy it's going to be dragging you back so make sure you concentrate more of your braids in the front so now i'm just going to go ahead to cover the net and kind of join the net to the wig cap in a way i don't know how to explain it but it's very understandable to what i'm doing so i'm going to go ahead to braid the same way i braid but the only difference is i'm taking that my ventilating hook my crochet hook right i'm just using the bigger pin of it because it comes with three pin like i said earlier i'm using using the bigger pin and then i'm just going to go ahead to use that to draw it into the net and the wig cap and then I'm just going to go ahead to braid it normally like I would. So this is what it looks like. You just want to make sure you do them as close as possible. And this is what it will look like when you're done. You can see it's already kind of covering the wig cap a lot. And this is where most of the braid is concentrated on this surrounding. That's where most of the braid is concentrated on, like I said. So you just make sure they are very close to each other. So that's it. And I just went ahead to braid my frontal like I would normally do. I braid my frontal in a not less way in a way i don't know i just really like it that way it kind of just gives a a very clean vibe when i do it that way So once i'm done braiding the front out this is what the wig is looking like like this wig is actually so beautiful i'm actually in love with how the black looks it just looks very elegant in some way so i'm just going to go ahead to trim you want to go ahead to trim your wig it's very important for you to trim your wig i don't care how you think you braid so neat trim it go ahead to trim it put in the work and then i'm just going to go ahead to put that hair in that in hot water i find out doing my hot water method this way is actually more i don't know it's more nice doing it this way than dipping the whole hair in hot water because this kind of straightens the it straightens the attachments that are down that kind of um you know coily once you pour the water this way it kind of does everything for you so i'm just gonna go ahead and apply my mousse once i'm done applying the hot water you have to allow it dry a little bit before you apply your mousse not so much it should still be wet 
but just a little bit then you apply your mousse so that's really it lovelies that's really it for the making of the hair i'm just going to go ahead to start installing this wig and yeah So we're done with the making of the wig and I'm just going to do a very quick install. As you saw previously, I have no wig cap on. It's just going to be a very quick install, nothing serious. But this is how the wig is looking on the head. It's actually really pretty, right? It's so lovely. And this color, I mean, I mean. I know it's just black, but it's still giving it that less. And then we have the pink at the back which is just kind of poking out a little bit. So I'm really excited about this install. So let's, you know, get through with it and let's see how it goes. First step is always take the hair away from your face. Always, it's literally a moss. It just helps you do better. Then, because this is a five by five tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and take my scissors and cut off this, like this join in here. So I'm just gonna take my Ebbin Wonderless spray. You can go ahead to use Got To Be, you can go ahead to use um, any adhesive you have. You could even use glue, your choice, your preference, anything that works for you. Whatever works for you, works for you. I'm just going to use my elastic band and just kind of wrap that around it. I'm literally just going to wait for that to dry and then I'm just going to cut off the lace. That's basically all I have to do left. And that's why I really like closure wigs because it's just really simple. Your install is super fast, unlike your lace wig that you have to like take time. But yeah, that's really it. So now we're done wasting. I'm just gonna take that off and then cut our lace. So lovely is we're done. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this off. And yeah, I'm not really happy with this side. It's lifting. But I mean that easy. So I'm gonna take this off and yeah. Yeah, we're done. So I'm just gonna stand up and show you the length. This one is kind of really long. Yeah, it's really long. <laughs> it's really long. I can't even show you why it's standing. So this is what it looks like. It's really long. I'm gonna try and put a clip of me showing it while the camera is slanted. So for you to see how long it is, but this is the final look. This is how it's looking like. I really hope you like it. What it's looking like. I really love this braid and yeah, I really love how it came out. The pink is actually barely visible. I guess that's why it's called peekaboo. Maybe if you just do like this, you just bring out a bit of pink. But the pink is 
is hidden it's just hidden inside so let me know what you think about this style let me know your thoughts your comments if you have any question let me know down below in the comment section down below before i forget to mention so i have some pack of crochet pins i was thinking about doing a giveaway with them just a little bit because i know a lot of people have been looking for where to get and they've not found so i don't know how to give it yet but look out for that in future videos i'm planning to do that okay just look out for that this is for my real mvps for people that stayed to the end of this video so look out in future video i think two to three videos from now i'm going to be giving them out i think they are 15 but yeah that's really it so lovelies thank you so much for watching to the end of this video and if you're watching the end of this video you already know you're the what you're the you're the real mvp if you like this video make sure to check out my other content i have a lot of content i started a brighter series i'm just gonna leave that up here and also if you love my videos i'm gonna leave a hair playlist you can go ahead to kind of check through and see whichever videos you like and just keep on watching thank you so much for watching and love you Mwah.